So the question might come, are there some examples in Scripture of this process? We've been talking about um, access. We've been talking about hope. Uh, we've been talking about these things in a, in a sort of principled um, way, but, but what does that really look like? Does Scripture talk about that anywhere? Well, it does. And so I want to share a couple of examples. There actually are lots of them. First, I want to take you to Exodus chapter 17. The people of Israel have escaped Egypt. They have made their way through the miracle, the wonder of the Red Sea crossing and watched the waters drown Pharaoh's army behind them. They've made it across the desert of sin. That's what it's called, the desert of sin the dryness, the heat, the dusty trail. And they know that this day will take them to Rephidium, an oasis on the edge of the desert. Uh, perhaps it's one that Moses knew only too well from his days herding sheep for his father-in-law, Jethro. In any case, they know, and they are anticipating a place of rest and relaxation, to slack their thirst and cleanse their bodies. But Raphidium is dry. What? An oasis that's dry at the end of a long, dusty trail? There's a near revolt. Moses, what are you doing to us? But God intervenes again, opening that passage to the safe harbor. Take the elders, strike the rock, water will gush. And it does. God wants the leaders to see it happen, to be reminded again of the, the access, the power, the harbor, the hope. Storms come, difficulties descend, not to destroy us, but as part of the refining process, just like Israel at Rephidium. This is Ben Moore from West Highlands United Methodist Church with a thought for your day. Just another way of reaching out. Thank you.